Well, here we are again. Welcome to Riding Shotgun with Tupper. And uh, last time we were out here, <laughs> the corn was being harvested and uh, they took our beans on Sunday and yesterday. So everything's out of the fields right now. Um, and I haven't been back, I, I walked back here Sunday night and um, they were still going at it with the beans. So I haven't been back here since it's all out, anxious to kind of see it. Um, Man, it was a crazy weekend. Um, between Friday night and Saturday late afternoon, I felt like I had covered a ton. I felt like I'd seen a ton. And um, and it was interesting. Um, starting Friday night with the football game in which the, the football team, I thought, played somewhat miserably. Um, missed an opportunity to do some things. When you have two weeks to prepare and you're going to play a team that's had its struggles and and uh, you're at home and it's under the lights and your players tell you how excited they get to play under the lights at home and and then you go out there and, and look like you've regressed at, at every position and and the coaching didn't look good none of it looked good it was a bad look um it just it was very discouraging and um uh, and then yesterday at lovey's press conference um they uh made the quarterback change which you know i've been calling for for a couple of weeks and i understood why they wanted to kind of stick with it and see but um I, I didn't understand why they stuck with it in the second half of the nebraska game i mean that was going nowhere um so um they certainly agree with that because not only did they promote jeff george to number one um cam thomas is now number two which means chase crouch who started the first four games has slid back to number three on the depth chart and um that was a little bit surprising but um i think it's one thing we all ought to understand is this is not a football team that's one quarterback change away from suddenly becoming a really good football team okay um it would be nice though if they could generate a semblance of a downfield passing game and be able to not just go three four six yards at a time on a successful drive they had a couple of those going against nebraska that ended up settling for field goals which is a shame but um Geez, if you can get a 20-yard, 25-yard, 30-yard, 15-yard chunk in the middle there on some passing yardage, and, you know, your wide receiver group, I think, is your most talented group. I think it's just criminal that you only get the ball, you only target Mikey Dudek twice the other night. And I think when you asked him about it on Monday, they agree with that. Um, no explanation offered as to why they didn't do more. Although, um, you know, I had a long talk with Garrick McGee, um, about some of this, and I know his play calling is under fire by people, and, and he, he'll tell you that he probably isn't crazy about all the play calls, but that it's hard to call plays right now with these kids out there. He was t talking about one situation where they got into a, uh, they were, this was after Illinois generated a turnover, they had the ball down at the Nebraska about 15, they had a play, they had the defense that they wanted, they had a play that they had practiced throughout the week, um, and they got up there to run the play. There was a true freshman at left tackle, Larry Boyd. There was a true freshman at left guard in Alex Paljuski. There was a true freshman at tight end in Lewis Dorsey. And there was a true freshman, freshman running back in Rayvon Bonner. And they ran the play, and all four freshmen did the wrong thing. And, um, of course, the play doesn't have any chance of succeeding. <laughs> but, um, you know, those are some of the freshman things that we're kind of living with right now. And we would like for them to get better. And you can say, well, that's on the coaches. They got to coach them up. Yeah. Um, you know, Larry Boyd got beat twice for sacks the other night. And he's not thinking about the fact that on third down, they're going to run line stunts on him and so forth. He's thinking about, I got to block my guy. And, um, you know, and they do something over there. And other teams are going to do the same thing. I was going to do the same thing this weekend. And so, um, you know, he's got he's to learn more and he's got to learn faster. And that's true of all of them. But um, um, hopefully the, the quarterback change might generate something. It's just Iowa's very good. They play really sound. They're not going to be tricky. They're just going to do what they do really well. And they're going to do it in that 70,000-seat Kinnick Stadium where the crowd is literally on top of you. And uh, I think some veteran guys like that. I think some freshman guys are going to get a little freaked out by it because you can't hear, you can't think. Um, too bad. That's just how it's going to be Saturday. So we'll see what happens Saturday. But I went to Illinois basketball practice Saturday morning. Awesome. That was great. Um, Brad was Brad Underwood was really good prior to practice, just talking about stuff. And then he had both um, uh, being 
Hall of Fame weekend. He had Manny, Manny Jackson and um, Jerry Colangelo address the team. And then those guys sat in uh, folding chairs at center court and watched the practice, three hour practice. And I spoke with both of them afterwards and they were both really impressed with the practice. And you know, we gotta remember Jerry Colangelo is a dude that's been to a zillion practices. I mean, he's been an NBA head coach. He's the head of USA Basketball. He's orchestrated these last three Olympic gold medals. Um, he's He's been around for about everything. And he was raving about uh, the intensity of the practice, the amount of teaching that went on. Um, and Manny Jackson said the same thing. He could not have been more impressed. And um, so that, that was good. And, um, and then um, the Hall of Fame ceremony, listen, if you're an Illini person, and I can't imagine you're going to be watching this if you're not, you know, if you're interested in Illinois athletics, you've got to go to that. If you didn't go, um, if you have any opportunity at all, they had the one up in Chicago, that was spectacular, but that was also $250 a seat, and not everybody's going to be able to go to that in a black tie uh, affair. Uh, this one Saturday, though, was casual dress, free of charge, free parking. The State Farm Center was curtained off into an intimate setting. It's never looked better. It looked absolutely wonderful. And you were really intimate with these people who were there, all of these inductees and their families and these this crowd. And the speeches were inspirational. Ryan Baker did a great job emceeing it. Uh, Josh Whitman was there, of course, uh, involved in the in the ceremony. But speaker after speaker after speaker was good, was interesting, and really made you appreciate on a different level um, the, how important their experience at Illinois was, both as an athlete and as a student. You know, sometimes we smirk at the student athlete phrase. Um, you wouldn't do that probably after this. Um, and uh, listening to oh, all of these speakers, Virginia McCaskey was so good, 94 years old, speaking on behalf of her father, George Hallis. Th that was just moving. Um, Craig Virgin and so many of his track and cross country teammates there for that, that was fantastic. Um, he was wonderful. In fact, I'm gonna write a separate piece about it about him talking about the value of the teammate friendships that he's held over the years and how important they've been in his life. Uh, Manny Jackson talking about stuff like that. Colangelo too, um, uh, the track athletes, um, the gymnasts, the Mary Eggers, the volleyball player. I mean, they were all interesting. And then Dick Butkus shocks us all because I talked to Dick prior to the ceremony over at the I Hotel and, you know, hey, I grew up in Evanston, um, and I was there for his career, watching on TV, listening on the radio. That guy is a football idol for me. I think he's one of the most amazing football players of all time. Um, you know, he was, he was just an absolute beast the way he played the game. Um, no nice way to say it. I mean, he was. And, um, and you know, and, and I've never, and I just thought that he would get up there and this stuff isn't going to affect him very much, you know. He's just going to, you know, ah, I've killed guys on a field, and, you know. And, and, and he got up there and started talking, and he was talking about how when Illinois recruited him, you know, Notre Dame wanted him, a uh, Catholic guy. And, and um, Illinois, one of the things Illinois did was they made a big deal out of the fact that Dick was married coming into college, his high school sweetheart. And... And they made a big deal out of, listen, we got to figure this out so it works for her uh, in terms of housing and all that kind of business. And how he said, you know, when you get to be, he'll turn 75 this year, he said, you do a lot of reflecting. And, um, and apparently the reflection began to get the better of him. And uh, he and his wife have been married for 54 years, I want to say, maybe uh, something like that. Um, and um, how he said, you know, I've done a I haven't just sat here and watched game film since I retired. I only played nine years because of injuries. And he said, I've done other things. We know he was had did some TV things and so forth. And um, he said, you know, my education at Illinois, I mean, he this is a guy that's not a scholar, but um, his experiences at Illinois have stayed with him. And as he talked about it, he started to choke up. And, and he became kind of annoyed with himself for letting his emotions get the better of him because that 
that's not the Dick Butkus uh, facade that he wants to put on, I guess, and always has. And he started yelling at himself. He was pounding his fist into his hand going, come on, you can get through this, you know. And we're all like, holy moly, this is Dick Butkus doing this. It was unbelievable um, just to watch him fight it over the finish line, get through his speech. And um, the people, they gave him a standing ovation when he took the stage. They stood and roared and cried when he was done. It was emotional. It was moving. It's. I was talking to Kent Brown, the sports information director, and in the course of the last calendar year, we were talking about what's the coolest thing you've seen and or covered, and you know that we've been fortunate enough in our jobs to be witness to. And um, you know, normally it would be a play or a game or a you know, a championship or a, a run at one or something, or it may be something unrelated to Illinois, you know, um, you know, the, the Cubs World Series would have been high on my list in 16, but in 17, honestly, um, that Hall of Fame thing might be number one, and the Butkus acceptance speech might be number one with a star, uh, the, the best of the best. The, the bottom line is that if you didn't go, and I would say there was maybe 2,000 people there, if you didn't go, please put it on your calendar for next year. You know, we go to these events hoping that we're rewarded in some way. And, hey, let's face it, with the Illinois football and basketball, those rewards lately have been few and far between. But here's a guaranteed reward. You walked out of that place and you were so grateful that you had gone. And it cost you nothing. A couple hours out of your afternoon, you learned so much about some of these people. The video stuff was terrific that they did with it. Um, just to see the crowd reaction was great. Uh, I'm not kidding you. It was wonderful. And it would be a shame if next year they don't double that crowd, 4,000 or 5,000, and, um, and present them with the problem, wow, if people are going to really start coming to this, we might have to expand the scope of that you know, reduced size uh, State Farm Center. So anyhow, it was wonderful. Um, I hope you'll get a chance to go uh, this weekend, Illinois and Iowa, 11 o'clock over in Iowa City. I'll be going over to that game on Friday. And, um, you know, I don't have any um, notion that they're going to win the game. And I think with this, with these kids, the more I see and the more I think, the more that I realize that, you know, there's a price to play for the investment in these kids. But but that doesn't mean there can't be improvement. That doesn't mean there can't be signs um, that they're, you know, gaining on it, even if it's only by inches. And um, we'll see if the Jeff George change at quarterback can do that. I hope so. He's a good kid. Chase Crouch is a really good kid, too. Um, you know, I kind of feel bad for him because I know how excited he was to get this opportunity. But um, you got to go with somebody that maybe can get you a little better production. We'll see if that happens. Thanks for riding along. Appreciate it. The beans are out. <laughs> and uh, thanks, everybody. Talk to you next week.